Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to cover estimating square roots. Our learning target for today is going to be I can approximate irrational numbers. A little bit of review of perfect squares. Remember, perfect squares are numbers whose square roots are whole numbers. Perfect squares are always rational numbers. Remember, a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. It's also decimals that end or repeat. Some examples of perfect squares would be 4, because the square root of 4 is 2. 64, the square root of 64 is 8. And 81, the square root of 81 is 9. Non-perfect squares are always irrational numbers. Remember, you cannot write an irrational number as a fraction. And they are decimals that do not have a repeating pattern, and they do not end. Some examples of non-perfect squares would be 6, 12, and 122, because all those square roots will be numbers that do not end. Now, while the square root of a non-perfect square is irrational, we can use our knowledge of perfect squares to estimate their value. So if I want to estimate square roots, I can estimate their value to the nearest tenth of a decimal. So looking at number one, I want to estimate the value of the square root of 50. Now, if I use a number line, that can help me locate the closest perfect squares that are next to the square root of 50. So knowing my first 15 perfect squares, and even more perfect squares, really comes in handy. So the square root of 50, I know, is in between the square root of 49, and then the next consecutive perfect square is the square root of 64. I know the square root of 49 is 7, and the square root of 64 is 8. So the square root of 50 is between 7 and 8. Now if I want a better estimate, I can see how close the square root of 50 is to 49 and to 64. 50 is 1 away from 49, and it's 14 away from 64. Looking back at my number line, I know the square root of 50 is only one space away from the square root of 49. It's going to be closer to 7 than it is 8. It should just be a little over 7, so a good decimal estimate would be about 7.1. Number 2, estimate the value of the square root of 22. Again, knowing my perfect squares, I know the square root of 22 is in between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25. I know the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 25 is 5. So the square root of 22 is between 4 and 5, but it's closer to 5, because the square root of 22 is only 3 spaces away from 25, and it's six spaces away from 16. It's a little bit over half of the way to 5. Therefore, a good decimal estimate would be about 4.7. Number three, if I want to estimate the value of the square root of 103, I know the square root of 103 is in between the square root of 100 and the square root of 121. Square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of 121 is 11. So 103 is between 10 and 11. But again, it's closer to 10. It's only three spaces away. Comparatively, it's 18 spaces away from the square root of 121. So a good decimal estimate for the square root of 103 would be about 10.1. Looking at number four, which of the following square roots is best represented by point A? So point A is between three and four. I know the square root of nine is three, and the square root of 16 is four. Out of my four answer choices, the closest to 16 would be the square root of 15. So C would make the most sense. Number five, which of the following would be the best estimate for the square root of 198? Again, knowing my first 15 perfect squares, I know that square root of 198 is in between 14, which is the square root of 196, and 15, which is the square root of 225. 
the square root of 198 is extremely close to 196, so it should be very close to 14. So the best decimal estimate out of those four choices would be A, 14.1. Number six, between which two integers would each of the following lie? The square root of 90 is between 81 and 100, which is 9 and 10. The square root of 175 is between 169 and 196, which is 13 and 14. And the square root of negative root 12 is between 3 and 4, because 3 is 9 and 4 is 16. However, there's that negative sign out in front, so it should be negative 3 and negative 4. Number 7. Rebecca bought a square table for her kitchen. The area of the table's surface is 65 feet squared. What's the approximate length of one side of the table? So if we're looking at a square table, I know area is equal to side squared. So one side will be the square root of 65 because the area is 65. So one side length is the square root of 65. If I want to estimate the square root of 65, I know it's between 64 and 81, which is 8 and 9. Notice that the square root of 65 is very close to the square root of 64, which is 8. So a good decimal estimate would be 8.1. In this lesson we learned, when estimating square roots, determine the two consecutive perfect squares that are between the number you are estimating. Then determine which perfect square it is closest to, based off how many numbers it is away, and make the best decimal estimate. That's a wrap on this video. We'll see you in the next one.